the manslaughter case of Jason Corbett. The sentencing hearing is underway in North Carolina. And joining us now is Southern correspondent with the Irish Independent, Ralph Regal. Ralph, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Uh, this whole uh, sorry uh, hearing, we're getting bits and pieces and getting some insight into Molly Martins and her family. Uh, let's talk about the first thing. Uh, they wanted their legal costs to be crowdfunded. Yeah, that was one of the things that have emerged um, over over the past couple of days as part of the kind of the general analysis of the, the background to the case. And what had happened was that there had been a couple of um, social media appeals, um, particularly after their conviction in 2017. Of course, they were they were charged in January of 2016 with the second degree murder of Jason Corbett on August the 2nd, 2015. And after a five week trial pat in July and August, uh, they were convicted of that second degree murder and received 20 to 25 year prison sentences. Now, as you can imagine, um, legal fees here in the States are quite high and the family were determined that Tom and Molly would get the very, very best uh, lawyers. Now, during the original trial, um, Tom was defended by David Friedman, who was widely considered to be um, the best um, trial defence lawyer in North Carolina. Now, he passed away during the COVID-19 pandemic, but their legal teams, they're, they're, they have amongst the best lawyers in uh, North Carolina, mm. and that doesn't come cheap. So there had been several attempts by family members to crowdfund, to have special appeals online for people to don donate to help defray the legal costs for, for, for Tom and Molly. Now, the other uh, aspect of this that's uh, been discussed is Molly Martins wanted to adopt uh, the children of Jason Corbett and uh, she could not so do, at least not in the short term. No, and I think that has emerged as a, a very much a central element of the hearing over the last um, week and a bit. Essentially, Molly Martins, was she was not the biological mother of Jack and Sarah, and she met Mr. Corbett. She travelled to Ireland um, in 2008 to work as their nanny. Uh, she commenced a relationship with Mr. Corbett. And within a very, very short period of time, um, Jack and Sarah were calling their nanny mom. Now, when their mother died, um, which would have been in November 2006, the two children were aged two years and under. So they were very, very young. And what's interesting is... Uh, Molly and Jason married in June 2011 at, at quite a lavish wedding in Bleak House in uh, Tennessee. Ironically enough, a ceremony that was largely paid for by Mr. Corbett. But just a couple of weeks later, Molly Martins went to a divorce lawyer and her primary purpose of doing that was to determine what her rights were to the two children. Now, we heard evidence last week that she had gone to a person that she was friendly with as part of the kind of general neighbourhood and school community in Wahlberg, which is where Panzer Creek Court um, is located. That was the family home of um, Jason Corbett and Molly Martins. And she went to this lady called Mer uh, Melissa Sams and asked for her advice. Now, Ms. Sams specialised in basically high conflict custody cases. And she had referred her to an expert family law uh, lawyer and that lawyer told Molly Martins that basically unless adoption papers were signed she had very little rights to the two children she would get half the marital assets in the case of a divorce but the children would go with their natural father now there was one provision under North Carolina law which is that when children are 13 years old and older the courts can hear a petition from the children so the children at that point can tell the court look we want to live with dad or we want to live with mom. And the court can actually make a determination based on what the child wants. But of course, at that point, Sarah was just eight years old. So Molly would have had to stay with the marriage for another five years before that actually would have come into play. And the background that was painted was of Jason Corbett being very reluctant to sign adoption papers from Molly Martins. Now, the Martins family and, and the defence argument is that that was done so that he could wield leverage over Miss Martins within the marriage. But the Corbett family have consistently maintained that the reason he didn't do that was that he was exceptionally concerned about Miss Martin's background of mental health problems and about her increasingly bizarre behaviour. And we got a very, very small flavour of that last week when there was references to 
the lies that were told by Miss Martins, um, some fairly petty, some quite extraordinary. For instance, she lied to her college roommate about having a baby sister that had died of cancer to the point where she had a photograph of an anonymous child in a picture frame uh, and claimed that that was her baby sister who died of cancer when in actual fact she never had a baby sister. She claimed to be a foster parent. She wasn't. She claimed to be on the swim team of Clemson University, quite a very a pre prestigious university here in the South. She never was. Um, she had. She claimed to have been the editor of a magazine in Ireland. Of course, she wasn't. So there was lots of things where, you know, as one of the prosecutors said, um, she had a very complicated relationship with the truth. Mm -hmm. And all of that was going on while Mr. Corbett would not sign adoption papers. And yet it opened up him to a campaign from her family because Miss Martins considered that once he didn't sign adoption papers, he was in breach of a promise he had made to her as part of the, the, the marriage. And Miss Martins' family came on board then to tease and to jab at Mr. Corbett over his failure to sign adoption papers. Um, I read one report which suggested that she claimed to her pals that she had given birth to Sarah. Sarah, and that That's she right. had a difficult labour and, uh, you know, complete fantasy stuff. Yeah, and, and that's a very good point, Pat. And I think what's interesting is the context of where she did that. She claimed to be the biological mother of Sarah and went into quite an elaborate description of her labour at a local Bible study group. That's actually where she said that. And then went into an extraordinary explanation of complications she had post-surgery when of course the two children weren't hers the two children were all belong were, were delivered by mags corbett um, mags fitzpatrick corbett who was jason corbett's first wife and further lies that were told was that miss martins claimed that she knew mags fitzpatrick corbett of course she never did she came to ireland after miss uh, corbett mrs corbett had died and probably in one of the most I think alarming claims, certainly from the Corbett family's point of view, was that Miss Martins claimed that Mags Fitzpatrick Corbett had pleaded with her to look after her, her two children, Jack and Sarah, if anything should happen to her. And that was a claim that the Corbett family only became aware of on the eve of the wedding in June 2011. Now, is all this information available to the court? It, a lot of it has been put uh, onto the record um, for Judge David Hall, but essentially what he will consider are the reports that are submitted to him and the testimony that he has heard from the witness box. Now, in, in some ways, you would need the wisdom of Solomon, I think, to decide between the two, because th this hearing has been very, very heavily slanted, I think, towards the defence. Uh, there's been an awful lot of material entered during this hearing, which was never mentioned during the original 2017 hearing. And by the same point, there's a lot of material in the 2017 hearing, a lot of it quite damning of the circumstances in which Mr. Corbett met his death from the point of view of Tom and Molly Martins. And that material has not been entered in this hearing. And therefore, the judge seemingly cannot know it, even if he knows it, he can't know it formally. It, 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 it seems a very weighted process, but it shows how slick the lawyers are that they go for this plea on the basis that the prosecution can't bring forward the evidence that would be damning of her. Very much so. And it was also done on the basis that the submissions to Judge Hall would be on an agreed basis. So whatever the prosecution are putting forward is very much on an agreed basis with the defence. And I would suspect that we're, we're hearing roughly 10 to 15% from the prosecution point of view of what was said at the 2017 hearing. It is primarily all about the defence. And I would also have to say that if you looked at the, the, the Corbett family had, had repeatedly said over the years that having taken Jason Corbett's life, that Tom and Molly Martins were now going to basically try and take his reputation. And that has been very much the underlying theme of the evidence for the past week.